Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rachahakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And this is going to be short. Um, a guy asked on the comment board, you know, pretty much, you know, um, why do we keep the Passover when the Passover was commanded, all right, to be kept in Jerusalem, all right? This is Deuteronomy 16 and 16. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before Yahweh thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the place, all right, which he chose is Jerusalem. And I've saw this argument before. So I wanted to deal with it um, because you have those who are of the opinion we're wasting our time keeping the Passover. Now we keep the Passover and we just came out of it not too long ago out of faith. All right. We understand and know that keeping the Passover is not going to save us. But as the scriptures say, we rehearse the righteous act. You know, Yahweh Shai himself kept the Passover. Okay. So three times in a year, you know, all of the Israelite males were to go to Jerusalem for the Feast of Unleavened Bread, all right, which ultimately that's the Passover, and in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty, okay? So you have those who are of the opinion, because we aren't in Jerusalem, we are rebelling against the law, okay, <clears throat> by not, all right, being in Jerusalem, ultimately we're wasting our time we're rebelling against the law, all right? But what you men don't understand is that we are Jerusalem, all right? First of all, the first Passover was kept in the wilderness, all right, where we had a tabernacle on the fly. Now, the tabernacle represents what, all right? The uh, dwelling place of the Most High, all right, through his angel, his son, all right, that hovered over that tabernacle as the Israelites moved, you know, throughout you know, the wilderness. So the, the first Passover was technically not kept in Jerusalem. All right. But in the law, we see here that we're commanded. All right. Three times a year to go to Jerusalem. All right. For these particular feast days. Now, holy days. Holy means separate. Now, since 70 AD, we have not had a temple. And ultimately, we've been scattered. All right. But what, what, what you men don't get and understand is that Yahweh Shai freed us from the technicalities of that first covenant to where now we are a spiritual temple. All right. As a matter of fact, let's get that in the book of uh, Peter, second Peter. All right. Spiritual. OK. Because uh, let's get this first uh, in the book of uh, Isaiah, the 52nd chapter, okay, it says deliverance for Jerusalem, it says, awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, now is this talking about the actual city, Jerusalem, no, is this talking about an actual garment that you put on, no, this is speaking of the truth, it's symbolic, all right, and if you know anything about the Holy Scriptures, Israel all right, is Jerusalem, all right, before the actual city Jerusalem. We were technically supposed to be the holy city, the temple where the Lord dwelled, okay? But we had these carnal ordinances, all right, starting with the tabernacle that Moses built, okay, which was the center place of worship and, you know, the dwelling of the Most High. You had the, the priesthood after, you know, the order of Aaron, Moses, and so forth, all right? And then at the time of Solomon, all right, you know, David had his mind to build a temple. And where was that temple built? Okay, by Solomon, it was built in Jerusalem. You see, and that ultimately represented the physical dwelling place of the most high on earth. Okay, but we know according to prophecy, we wouldn't be in our land. We would be scattered. Okay, and that's why the Heavenly Father said in the book of uh, Real Quick, um, sanctuaries. 
Let's see here. Let's see here. Scatter thee. Let me see. We are like now small sanctuaries where the Lord has scattered us. Let's see if we can get the book of Ezekiel. Let's see. Let me see if I can look it up here. Uh, small sanctuaries. One second. It's in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 11 and 16. Give me one second here. Let me just go to it real quick. Ezekiel. And that's the beauty of the priesthood under Yahweh Shai. Is we don't have to physically be <laughs> in Jerusalem to be in Jerusalem. All right. Ezekiel 11 and 16. It says. Therefore, say thus saith the Lord, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet I will be to them a little sanctuary. What was the sanctuary? It was the, the tabernacle and then the temple. Well, now the sanctuary is wherever the believers are. Wherever the elect are, that's likened unto a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. So in the countries where we are in our exile, as we're in this captivity, all right, we can have a connection with our power and that's why we're likened unto Jerusalem, all right? Isaiah 52 and 1, awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion, this truth. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. We are that holy city, okay? So now under Yahweh Shai, in the, the, you know, after the priesthood of Melchizedek, all right, which Lord willing, we're a part of that, um, we are that holy city. We are that spiritual temple, okay? For hence, there shall no uh, no more come unto thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. All right? Shake thyself from the dust and arise. Sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Put off these uh, different philosophies that have your minds captive. And ultimately, you're likened unto Jerusalem. All right? So wherever we are, we are Jerusalem. Okay? So under Yahweh Shai, we don't have to physically go visit jerusalem to be linked in with the holy spirit and that's what you have particular camps that are still in bondage to that okay because they don't they don't have the understanding you got men who fly to jerusalem i remember a particular elder from hodc 12 um he said if we don't go to jerusalem we won't be able to receive the spiritual power and that's a lie because we are Jerusalem wherever we are. That's the beauty of the spiritual priesthood. That's the freedom under this grace period that Yahweh Shai has blessed us with. Because imagine being tied to the technicalities of that first covenant and trying to worship Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai in captivity. You be through. All right. So now let's go to 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. I believe this is it. All right, here we go. This is 1 Corinthians 3 and 9. For we are laborers together with the Most High. Ye are God's husbandry. Okay, planting, planting seeds of faith. Okay, and each seed that sprouts up after that, that, that is what? A, a, another believer added to the building. Okay, it says ye are God's building. See that? Ye are God's building. Ye are God's sanctuary. You see? According to to the grace which is given to me, all right, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, all right, so we can go in times past where, you know, Moses was commanded to build a tabernacle, okay, we can go to where, you know, uh, David had his mind to build 
a temple, all right? But the Heavenly Father said, no, your son Solomon is going to do it. But David gave Solomon that blueprint and he had the temple built. Okay, the heathen brought, you know, particular wood and, and everything in the temple was built. Okay, um, that that temple was decimated, you know, by the Babylonians. But we, we remember our forefathers in the uh, Persian Empire were given a decree by Cyrus to rebuild it. They started and then they couldn't finish. And then at the time of Darius, all right, it was finished. It was never brought back to its 100% form, but we had a, some form of a standing temple, all right? When when Yahawashah came on the scene, that st temple was still standing. Even the Greeks decimated it before that, but eventually we kind of got it back in some, you know, good standing, you know? And then at the time of Yahawashah, the temple was there, but it was, you know, corrupted. All right, John the Baptist and all of them came and separated from the temple. Then eventually, on down the line, 70 AD, that temple was decimated. And we were kicked out of the land, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth eventually via captivity and prophecy. Okay, so now that we no longer have that temple, all right, or that tabernacle that Moses built and that David gave Solomon the blueprint to build, <laughs> all right, um, how... How do we have connection with our power? Well, it's through belief. It's through him connecting with you and your mind. So wherever we are as Israelites, okay, the elect, the true believers, we're likened them to Jerusalem. So under Yahweh Shai, it's not that you, uh, if you go to Jerusalem, you're wicked, but you don't need to go there to the physical landmass because right now it's being, it's, it's, it's defiled. It's under heathen rulership, okay, and the temple is gone. Okay, so if brothers through faith want to keep the Passover, that's okay. Why are you condemning brothers or looking for a way to knock them when that covenant is done anyway? You see, we're under grace, liberty, and that comes through Yahawashai. You see, that's the high priest now. We no longer have to go to Jerusalem. We no longer have to go to Aaron. We have a high priest in the heavens that is connecting with us in spirit. And that is how we now are, what, a Jerusalem. Here we go. Ye are God's building, okay, dwelling place. That's what the temple represented, a dwelling place. That's why you had to go to Jerusalem. What was there? The temple, all right? But now we are the temple, okay? According to the grace of God, as we're under grace, has given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another build it thereupon, but let every man take heed how he build it thereupon. Now let's see if we can get a pre a precept to this. I know 2 Corinthians goes into it. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, some good ones, but let's see here. And a lot of those um, parables Yahweh Shai went into, you know, touch onto that as well. See, and, and see, when Yahweh Shai was telling those uh, scribes and Pharisees, the wicked ones who didn't believe the temple was going to be destroyed, they were losing their mind. All right? <laughs> they were losing their mind. But there's a spiritual temple that's going to be built. Okay? And that's in the book of Haggai that goes into that. See here, yeah, God's building. That's really what I wanted to. Okay, here we go. Yep. And that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David, and that's a spiritual temple. The stone which the builders refuse has become the head of the corner, and that's Yahawashah. He's the cornerstone, the chief cornerstone of this temple. Okay. Let's see here. Yep. Zechariah 6 and 12, and speak unto him, saying, Thus. Speaketh Yahweh of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is Branch. Okay, and that's speaking of Yahweh Shai, who came out of, out of Nazareth. Okay, born in Bethlehem, but eventually he came out of Nazareth, which I believe Nazareth, when you do research, that means Branch. It says, He shall grow up out of his place and shall build the temple of the Lord. All right, now did, did Yahweh Shai come onto the scene building a physical temple? No, he was, he, Peter. 
and the rest of the 12 were the beginning of the tabernacle of David being rebuilt. And now the believers that come in through the spirit as the disciples went out and ultimately, you know, there was a falling away, but we've wakened back up, you know, now the temple was being built. Even he shall build the temple of Yahweh and shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne and he shall be priest upon his throne and the council of peace shall be, be between them both. Right. Matthew 16 and 18. And I say unto this, thou art Peter and upon this rock will I build my church. There you go. That's the spiritual temple and tabernacle. It's with men. Okay, that's why in Revelation 21, it says the tabernacle of the Lord is with men. But it starts here with this knowledge. Okay. Let's see here. Yep. First Corinthians 3 and 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. All right. What ye know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. All right, so the Lord now dwells in us through our mind, in our mind, okay? Ephesians 2 and 20, and are built up on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach himself being the chief cornerstone, okay? So when, when men come to you with this argument, um, and we're going to get that in 1 Peter 2 and end it off. When people come to you with this argument, all right, about... Why are y'all keeping the Passover and y'all y'all breaking the law? Y'all not in, in, in Jerusalem. Well, we are Jerusalem, right? <laughs> so we are a spiritual temple, man. Okay? We are a spiritual temple, man. That's it. So wherever the elect are, those small sanctuaries are Jerusalem, wherever they are. And they have access and a connection with the Most High through His only begotten Son, who sends us the Holy Spirit. That's the access we've been granted through Yahweh Shai, man. And it's a beautiful thing. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. Okay, because if you didn't go up to Jerusalem under that first covenant, you pretty much, you were cut off. Okay, if you didn't keep the, the, the Sabbath the right way, you, you were cut off. So what Yahweh Shai has done for us is a, is a beautiful thing, man. First Peter's, the uh, second chapter, First Peter 2. And I guess I'm just in the spirit of addressing comments today. Usually I ignore a lot, but um, it's through the Holy Spirit. Uh, I just wanted to do this because I had my mind to go into the, uh, the etymology of the word Gentile, do a news and prophecy finally. <laughs> but, hey, you know, the, the spirit is the spirit. You know, we're not operating in our own, you know, uh, on our own agenda. It's all through the spirit. This is uh, 1 Peter 2, all right, living stones for God's house, okay? And that house was the the, the, foc the focus of our connection with our power was that temple. First it was that tabernacle, then that temple. Now the temple's decimated. Well, we have a spiritual temple, you see? And the heathen know to attack the, the, that, that, that temple. They knew, well, how are they going to attack this one <laughs> as we're scattered everywhere? You see, this is first Peter two and four to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious ye also as lively stones. What do you what are stones used to build a house? OK, are built up on a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. So wh where would you have to go to offer up a sacrifice? What order would you have to be under to offer up a sacrifice under that first covenant? You would have to be after the order of Aaron. You see that? <laughs> you didn't have access. You had to go through Aaron and his sons, and it was it was the temple. Well, now, wherever we are, we can offer up a spiritual sacrifice. You see? Acceptable by to the most high by Yahweh Shai. You see that? Wow. Wherefore, it is also contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a cornerstone, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. See, if you take Yahweh Shai away and try to be in Babylon a great or in your captivity and stick to those first covenant standards, you're out of there. You're cursed. You're, there's no way back. And if you, you're fooling yourself, if you think 
you don't need Yahweh Shai, but you have a lot of people who are of that mindset. Okay? Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, because you have a lot of, uh, you know, the, the Torah only cats who, you know, you ain't in Jerusalem. Why are you keeping the Passover? All right? You can't keep the Passover. You ain't in Jerusalem when the first Passover was in the wilderness. And we're spiritually in the wilderness now. So in the wilderness, what did they do? The temple, the tabernacle was basically, you know, they took it with them on the fly. So you, you got to be in the spirit to understand this book. And if you sitting back watching videos, looking for any, you know, <laughs> you know, little, you know, slip ups, you could try to, you know, hey, you know, that's you. And do what you do. But I would I would appreciate you guys do videos, man. It's like we doing the videos and then you just get to sit back and, and mock and ridicule. Then you go to your video, your page. It's just a damn, uh, 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 you know, playlist with Tony Braxton and Anita Baker on there. Like, no, nah, man, you do the work. If you're going to you got all of this stuff to say, at least teach. Offer up your sacrifice, homie. All right. Go just sit back. And and just, you know, now not everybody is a teacher, but a damn sure if you're going to come onto the comment board and have your opinion and try to confound us and you got this question, that question, you got this to say, that to say, at least, at least let me get to your page and see that you, 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 you at least laboring. At least you believe enough in what you, you, you trying to say to, to proclaim it. It's not that we're emotional and we do have emotions. Everybody has emotions. OK, but we're not overly emotional. You think that when we get on you guys, we're being emotional. But at the end of the day, you got to look at Moses's leadership. Look at what Yahweh even went through. And they, they, there were points where they got frustrated with Israel. Israel is a hard headed people. You see, but anyway, getting back to the point. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stones which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. OK. And a stumbling, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them would stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into a marvelous light. Which in times past were not a people, you were cut off, but now are the people of God. OK, we were Gentiles, heathen, no, no people, but now are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. There you go through Yahweh Shai, man. So that's that. And also, let's get Haggai to finish it off. You know, because, you know, I've heard this argument before and I've seen the uh, brother on the comment board put it. And we going back and forth. I'm not mad. You you just wrong. You know, a lot of you guys are wrong and. You know, you act like we haven't been in this thing, man. You know, apostles and elders going on, some of them close to 40 years, you know, uh, the 30 years, 20 years. You don't think we've heard these arguments before? Me going on 15. We read these books. They read these books. We tapped into these books and we know that the book of Enoch, the book of Jasher. Yeah, the scriptures say that there's these writings. But in the book of Revelation, what did, we hear? What, did, what did the angel tell John? These things you write and these things you don't. What did the Lord say in uh, Second Ezra, the 14th chapter through Ezra? He Certain things he told Moses to write, certain things he told Moses not to write. So we know and understand there's more. But what we have in the form of the, the, the Holy Scriptures with the Apocrypha included is all we need to get salvation. When you start to tap into these other books, you notice it bugs men out. Some people don't fully even understand the scriptures, the Bible, and then you, you go and try to delve into these other books and then you see, OK, well, damn. OK, well, Nimrod and Esau had an argument and, and there was 500, 5,000 feet men. Uh, uh, there's a and, and you start bugging out because you're not even rooted in what you fully believe yet. That overly deep demon. OK, and we have what we need to understand Enoch. Some of you, if I asked you the basics of Enoch, you wouldn't even know. Which family line did he belong to? Whose lineage was he through? What does his name mean? But then you want to go and tap into this book of Enoch 
which there's history in there that wasn't even the time that he was alive, that the, 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 the nations and things that were that are being mentioned weren't even in existence. So how could you attribute that to Enoch? Anyway, let me finish this off, man. Now, yeah, in the book, there's history that's some true history, a certain thing, but it's some bugged out mytho mythological stuff. And there's no way you can attribute it to Jasher or Enoch. That's what we're saying. Okay. Yeah, you can read them and see some you know, book of Jasher or see some interesting history or perspective. But I'm not for to get on the to the to the uh, YouTube and teach that to Israel and bug. Nah, man, the Lord never told us to do that. We'll get all of that when he wants us to have it in the kingdom. There's so much more, but he wants us to have faith in the little he gave us, man. And enough is that's enough. Because you notice the dudes who get into all of these books, they don't do no works. They just boast in all of those damn books. That dude who do the documentaries, who left the Adam Abbott camp, the, you know, the uh, Watchmen for Israel, what is he doing? Just all them books, now what? Look, we at the end. Being overly deep ain't going to get you nowhere. Now, this is the book of Haggai to end this, to end this off. The book of Haggai, chapter 2, and... Uh, See here. Yep. Let's see here. And this is speaking of what's going to happen at the end. Verse 7 And I will shake all the nations, and, desi and the desire of all nations shall come. All right. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord. And the, the true house, the true tabernacle, was always supposed to be the people. You see, Jake is stuck into the carnal. All right, ordinances and things like that. We all of these things lead to Yahushai in us as a people. We're supposed to be all right. The uh, the the he's supposed to dwell in us, and he is through the law, statutes, and commandments. We're the house. That's why we need those new bodies. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, says the Lord of Hosts. The glory of this latter house, or the glory of this latter temple, shall be greater than that of the former saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord. What is that? Us. That's why in Revelation 21, okay, Revelation the 21st chapter, what is the elect called when they're perfected? And I, John, verse 2, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, okay, prepared as a bride adorned for our husband. This is Israel in their perfected state. Okay, and what does he say next? And I heard a voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. See that? And that starts here. It started really when Yahweh came on the scene and Peter was his disciple, the rest of the twelve. Of course, Judas was replaced. You know, the, the and, and the disciples after them, other apostles and so forth, you know, went to start preaching to the Gentiles. The Gentiles got the Holy Spirit. Now we're here. We're being raised up. But the end result is that we are going to be the temple. We are going to be Jerusalem. Okay? So hopefully that clarifies some things. Hopefully y'all are edified, man. Shalom.